Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I apologise for not being on camera today. I know it's normally Amy that isn't, but currently I am reviewing a couple of products and things are just a bit crazy, uh, but I shall return to normal tomorrow. Well, as normal as I can possibly be anyway. Today is very much an AMD-focused news video because there are so many stories that are floating around from Team Red. So let's just jump straight into it with X599 and X590. This news comes to us via videocards.com. There have been numerous teases of X590 in the past, and we kind of knew that X599 was incoming, but this is basically solid information. Uh, Videocards.com typically have a very reasonable track record, particularly when they are certain about something. And why cry over Videocards.com claims to have obtained an internal memo that's floating around uh, from Asus, and this confirms the existence of a couple of motherboards. Uh, the first of which is the Prime X590 Pro, and the second is the ROG Strix X590e. Um, obviously. There's a lot of questions with these boards because the X570 already supports PCIe uh, Generation 4. So I'm not quite certain what 590 is going to bring to the table. I mean, possibly more PCIe slots. I don't really know what else it could be. Maybe just more robust I.O. Um, there's also no time schedule on when these uh, boards are going to be, uh, be released. Excuse me. Um, I, I guess the most logical thing would be with the 3950X, which is a couple of months from now. Obviously, that's the 16-core processor from the company. Or potentially a bit later. Uh, we did hear those rumors that AMD were also planning to launch a plethora of new products, processors, in October, along with Intel. So maybe they'll launch the new motherboards for AM4, potentially with the next generation Threadripper processors. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is also an article. I've condensed all the AMD news into an easy article, so you can find that linked in the video description if you need a quick refresher, or some people prefer it if they're going to link it to their friends just so they can get a quick bit of info. So once again, the um, article is in the description of the video. Uh, but anyway, furthermore, we also have ex uh, confirmed existence of the Zenith 2 Extreme boards. So if you're unfamiliar with Asus and their products, the first generation Zenith board was actually for X399, so the first and second generation of Threadripper processors. So this basically is confirming that there are new boards that are incoming for the third generation. Unfortunately, much like the 590, there's a lot of questions we still have with these boards, including whether it still has quad-channel memory or whether that's been increased. One thing we can definitely say, of course, is that it's going to be supporting the fourth generation of PCIe. But that's pretty obvious. Uh, moving on to RDNA and AMD's graphics cards. So, there has been a lot of discussion of what's coming up from AMD. And obviously, we know that they've already released the uh, 5700 and 5700 XT, with the XT being, you know, roughly uh, on par with the RTX 2070 2070 Super, depending. I suspect that the custom AIB models will be a little better. But uh, they don't have anything to compete with the higher end cards, such as the 2080 Super, and certainly enough to compete with the RTX 2080 Ti. But that probably won't be the case for much longer. Um, obviously, we had uh, Kamichi or, uh, on Twitter, who has been very accurate in the past with uh, RDNA slash Navi leaks, including the fact that the cards would have a SIMD32 architecture and much more stuff besides that. And basically, this has led to uh, Rosenblatt Securities, hands Mossesman, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. I get the feeling I butchered that terribly, so I can only apologize to the individual if they're watching. But they asked them, uh, Lisa Sue that is, could you give us a sense, if you can, on 7nm high-end uh, Narve and mobile 7nm CPUs? So Lisa Sue uh, said, and I quote, 
I would say that they are coming and you should expect our execution on those are on track and we have a quote rich 7nm portfolio beyond the products that we have currently announced in the upcoming quarters. Now obviously you can say well that is only limited to the mobile processors but I highly highly doubt that's the case from a personal standpoint and uh, you know, we can kind of already see various filings that have popped up um, via the ECC and so on. Uh, so yeah, we've seen that they have had multiple names patented. We've seen um, the recent uh, Narve 14 benchmarks as well. In fact, there's yet another entry on GFX Bench. We've seen a couple of these uh, that have emerged over the past several days. This particular entry is being listed as a device of 7340 colon C7. And I'm not going to read out the results because they're very much what we've seen uh, several times in the past before. But yet again, it's just further emphasizing that AMD are preparing to launch a product and, you know, it's slowly getting ready to come to market. And frankly, I just... It, it all just makes sense, and I don't think that AMD are going to want to leave sales on the table, which obviously they are basically doing at the moment, because if you want to go 4K, the RTX, uh, sorry, the RTX 2080 and uh, uh, 2080 Ti are just, you're really your only option um, if you want to, if you don't mind going NVIDIA. So obviously AMD will want to provide a solution for you, and it's going to be interesting to see what the 5800 or whatever uh, these cards are going to be uh, called uh, actually priced at because that ultimately is going to be kind of the big thing how are they priced compared to the nvidia counterparts and also what type of performance are we going to be seeing uh heat that's also going to be a really big question as well hopefully uh, we can see some improvements uh, over the original rdna uh, implementation as well Next piece of news is actually from Scott Herkelman. That's right, Mr. Jabated. And he recently went on to agree with NVIDIA's Morgan Maguire regarding ray tracing being a requirement for GPUs by the year 2023. I actually recently discussed this, and uh, Morgan Maguire is very well respected in the industry. I mentioned that, yes, he's an employee over at NVIDIA, where he has focused much of his career, around 10 years now, on ray tracing, but it's not like that's the only trick in his bag. He also is a, a university professor, he's worked on numerous titles, he even works on uh, Unity, so he is very well known in the industry. And Scott Herkelman also requires very little introduction. Uh, and he has said that he actually agrees it's actually one of the few times he's basically said that he agrees with NVIDIA, uh, particularly with Morgan Maguire, but he does believe that ray tracing is going to be a requirement for graphics cards by the year 2023. And it honestly makes an awful lot of sense um, because the next generation consoles support ray tracing. Um, and obviously they're going to launch in 2020, which means by 2023... They're going to be in like the midpoint of their life cycle, which means that developers really would have gotten a handle on the hardware. They would have kind of know the best way to get the most out of the machines. And I suspect by that point, uh, ray tracing in terms of the actual software side of things, the implementation of, of ray tracing is probably going to be cheaper, as in it's not going to be, uh, it's probably going to be more efficient. That's the best, best way of describing it. So, the second generation of RDNA will support ray tracing. Uh, Turing obviously already supports ray tracing, and we suspect that that's only going to be doubled down on by the GeForce uh, RTX 30 series of cards. And even Intel have essentially confirmed that we will be seeing uh, ray tracing from their GPUs as well. So yeah, I think uh, it makes just logic logical sense. In fact, as a small piece of bonus news, I forgot to mention that uh, David Cage has recently also been discussing ray tracing. Uh, he, of course, works with Quantic Dream. And he said, and I quote, I think the lighting is going to be a key thing. There's a new technology called ray tracing that we talk a lot about these days. And I think it's going to be interesting because it will allow us to improve reflections, lighting, and shadows. And I think that's the big deal. For years, I mean, the amount of polygons you could display was key. 
Then it become the shaders, then textures, and I think it's all about the lighting. And more subtle and nuanced the lighting will be, the better the image will be. I don't think it's really about a war about resolution. I know that people talk about 8K displays these days and blah 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 blah. Those are his words, not mine. I don't think this is the real next battle. I would rather put the focus on lighting, lighting, lighting. And finally, lighting. The last story that we're going to be tackling is Arcturus, as there has been another update to this. And this comes to us through freedesktop.org. Um, so basically, Arcturus was a mystery for quite a long time. Originally, it was thought to be a successor to uh, Navi. Well, no, now, of course, RDNA. So we know that instead we're just going to get uh, Narve second generation. And then we kind of thought maybe it was a chip specifically designed for the consoles. And then we actually learnt the truth. And that is that it's actually an offshoot to Vega. Um, but with the characteristic of it not actually producing graphics. So it is actually entirely designed around the purpose of compute. And this latest entry on freedesktop.org actually provides yet further hints that it's definitely going to be an evolved chip. Um, I'm going to repeat this verbatim. Arcturus chip Enom is less than Narve 10 since it's still GFX 9, but its VCN version belongs to VCN 2.x. GFX 9 is, of course, a reference to the Vega architecture whereas GFX 10 is to denote Narve, uh, but as for VCN, this most likely stands for Video Core Next, aka AMD's video encoder. So as this update implies, it looks like uh, the original Vega was using the first generation of VCN, but Arcturus seems to have some updated blocks then across the GPU. I'm not quite certain though what has been updated overall, what type of efficiency gains we're going to have for Arcturus. As a quick reminder, this is not a GPU in the strictest sense of the word. It is strictly designed around compute performance. So very much, you know, data center type of tasks, high performance computing, that type of thing. And maybe given what we're seeing here, also things like video acceleration, decoding, and could definitely have multiple uses in the data center. But I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, then the normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.